Greetings, this is Max so Diddly here, and today I am here with another Visual Basic tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're going to be validating the credit or debit card number. So we're going to be using the Loon algorithm, and basically the Loon algorithm is uh, a common check digit technique used to validate credit cards. And what we do is we convert the input to an integer array. Then Starting from the right, we double each other digit. If that digit is greater, becomes greater than 9, we then mod it by 10 and then add 1 onto the remainder. If you don't know what mod means, it basically means we're going to get the remainder. For instance, let's say we did 11 mod 4. That would equal 3, because 3 is the remainder if we do 11 divided by 4. Because obviously 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12. So what we basically do is we're like, right, so we know the highest amount of 4s that can evenly go into 11 is 2, which is 8. What's the difference between 8 and 11? Well, that's 3. So that's your remainder. Let's say we did 4 mod 2, we would get a 0 because 2 goes perfectly into 4. After that... We add up all digits. Then, if the sum of all digits is a multiple of 10, then it's valid. Otherwise, it's invalid. And we can check for that using the mod expression again. And this will work for Amex, MasterCard, Visa, and a few other providers. So let's get right into how we're going to do it in Visual Basic. So, in our main subroutine, we've got console.writeline, validate credit card. And then we've just put in a number. This is going to just print true or false. And we're calling our validate uh, subroutine right here. And here we've got our function which we're going to start creating. So you're going to do function validate credit card input as string. This is going to be the credit card debit card number we wish to validate. Then we're going to do as boolean as we're going to return a true or a false to represent if it's valid or not. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an integer array. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do dim digits. Then we're going to do uh, some curly brackets. And we're going to do inputs.length inside. This means we're going to create an integer array that is as long as the string we've just provided here. Because obviously, we're literally just going to convert each digit in the string to its own element of an integer array. And then we do as integer because it's an integer array. Then we're going to do a for loop. We're going to do for i as integer equals one. Two digits dot length minus one. Then we do digits i equals convert to int 32. Get char input dot i dot two string. So basically, we're going to loop through this entire string and each digit we're going to add to our integer array, but we're going to convert it. And it's a little weird here what we're doing. We're converting that string, a digit, into a character, and then we're converting it to a string, and then we're converting it to an integer. And the reason is, if we want to use um, the convert to int32, we can't pass in a character and get the outcome we want. So we have to convert to a character and then convert back to a string. So that character is a string, but that string only has a character. And then we can convert it to an integer using this technique, which is why we've got dot two string on the end. But basically, we're getting each character in that string of our credit card number and we're putting it into an integer array. That's what we're doing in a simple for loop. After that, we have got our next for loop. And this is going to be the, starting from the right, double each other digit. If greater than 9, mod by 10 and add on 1 to the remainder. And it's going to be that step. So we're going to do 4 int i as integer equals digits dot length minus 2. And then we do 2, 0, step minus 2. So what's going on here? Well, most for loops you do probably start with i on 1 or 0. And you might be thinking, but Max, why are we starting at the length of the whole string, of the whole array? 
instead. And that's because we need to traverse through this array starting from the right and not the left. If we're going left to right, we could start at the beginning of the array. But since we want to go through backwards, we need to start at the length. Then we do minus two because we're going to be skipping every other element. Which is why we've also got the step as minus two. So literally we're just going to be... If we use this number as an example, we might go three, seven, zero, nine, one... And that's basically what we're doing. We're just skipping every other digit. Then we can do dim temp as integer equals digits i. We're literally just creating a temporary variable to store the current digit we're working with. Then we do temp equals temp times 2. We are doubling the digit. Then we're going to check if that digit is now greater than 9. So if temp is greater than 9... Temp is now equal to temp mod 10, then we add on 1. Because this step involves, if the, if the digit is greater than 9, we mod by 10, then add 1 onto the remainder. And temp mod 10 will get us a remainder. Then we add on 1 at the end. Then we do digits i equals temp. So after we do all the manipulation, we just reassign that digit we are working with to equal the temp value. We don't have to have a temp value, but I'd rather have this to make this more readable for beginner programmers. After that, we are going to do dim total as integer equals zero. This is going to be the variable to store the total of all the digits. Then we're going to just loop through it all. So we're going to do four i as integer equals zero. Two digits dot length minus one. Step one. Total plus equals digits i. This for loop is just going through the entire integer array and adding all the digits. So we get one total, that's the value of every digit. Then we do return total mod 10 equals 0. So the final step is, if the, if the sum of all digits is a multiple of 10, then it's valid. And we know when we do, when we do a mod, we get the remainder. And if the remainder is zero, that means the numbers are multiples of each other. So we can actually check, we can actually use to check if a number is a multiple of another number using mod and checking for zero. And if this is equal to zero, then this return statement is going to return a true to where we call the code. Let's say there is a remainder, then it's not going to be equal to zero, and therefore this will return a false to wherever we called the function. And that's it for the tutorial. So thanks for watching and now we're going to just check and validate to make sure we've done everything correctly. So we're just going to copy and paste a Visa debit or credit card number and then we're going to hit play. I have a link in the description for a place where you can get some sample data. And as you can see it says true. This is very good. Let's put in an example of an Amex number. For all you people who like good cashback deals. Let's hit play. It's true. How about we type in some random numbers and see what happens. If it says true then we got very lucky. It says false. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take an existing Amex credit card number. One that's provided on a website, not one that belongs to a person. We're going to cut off two digits and replace them with 69 to be funny. If this is valid, it's going to be pretty epic. But it's not valid. Because just plonking on 69 onto something doesn't make it right. And that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more Visual Basic tutorials, and thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.